The following WJR broadcast is brought to you by Mesa for good health, good business, and great schools. To learn more, visit MESSA.org. All right, 7 to 57 here on the Paul W. Smith Show on News Talk 760 WJR. It is a, a, a battle that's been going on for years. It's just been back and forth between the bridge company and MDOT. And we may have a breakthrough here, and we'll see. You know, it occurs to me, nobody ever says this. I'm going to say it uh, on some of the literature because I've, I've read so much about all of this in so many different ways. But just as a reminder, the Detroit International Bridge Company is based in Warren. They own and operate the Ambassador Bridge, of course. And they've done that, doing business in Detroit since 1929, privately owned, built with private funds. Of course, the Ambassador Bridge, the busiest international border crossing in North America, employing about 300 people in the United States and Canada. They are active in a variety of community organizations and charities. I know for a fact from our broadcasts from Forgotten Harvest in the past, Nora Maroon is always there, and uh, uh, they're even one of our presenting sponsors on the Paul W. Smith Golf Classic for benefiting Think Detroit Pal and a whole bunch of other areas. Uh, They are saying that they are surrendering, surrendering control, ceding control of the project, and uh, and they will comply in every way, shape, or form with what the judge is asking them. And they'll face uh, Judge Edwards today. And they readily admit they're hoping that by doing this, they'll avoid more jail time, as, as Manuel Matty Maroon and his president, Dan Stamper, have spent time in jail. Matthew Maroon, his son and the vice chairman of the company, the Detroit International Bridge Company, on the other end of our line. And uh, you were called in. You will be facing the judge this morning. Uh, Good morning to you, Matthew. And what are you going to say to the judge that you hope will end all of this? Well, if if I'm able to to speak in court today, Paul W., I would inform the judge that uh, we are doing everything we can and have already started uh, complying with uh, his orders in each and every way. Here's the thing that's confusing to me, however. Uh, I went on that drive. We played the audio on on my show. Uh, Stacy Kerr was at the wheel and doing the explaining. Your mom, Nora Maroon, in the back seat. And we went through the checklist of the construction accomplished by the Detroit International Bridge Company on the DIBC property, the toll booths relocated, the fuel pumps relocated, a two-lane dedicated truck road on the DIBC property, the emergency access drive, uh, M dot maintenance drive. I went through this checklist while I was doing the drive around, and it was being explained to me all ramps, both inbound and outbound, and plaza pavement, all drainage, pavement markings, fencing line, blah blah blah. Uh, DIBC require acquired rather all property. Uh, uh, so I- anyway, we went through that. We had the the tricolored map. We went. What is it? I I, I thought that you have said to us in the past that you had. Uh, done everything that was asked of you. And I thought there was a a bit of confusion, or was it an interpretation of what everybody thought this project was going to be? Well, the distinction is is quite quite simple, Paul W. We signed an agreement with MDOT, and attached to it were certain plans to build the gateway. That includes the ramps and everything else that you just listed. We believe that we have complied with the gateway and done everything that it is that we were supposed to do. Uh, that's what we worked on before the lawsuit when we were building it. That's what we worked on after the lawsuit when we were continuing to build it. And that's what we feel that we've completed. However, the judge feels otherwise and has issued orders saying that we haven't complied and he's told us other things to do. And even though we intend to fight that, it's not a fight today and it's probably not a fight in his courtroom. Maybe it's in a higher court, and uh, hopefully one day we'll get the right to uh, air those arguments, and someone might even agree with us. So you've already be- begun making cuts on Pier 19, uh, yes, sir, with a concrete brake machine. You're gonna you're gonna knock down those uh, the the entrance ramp that I was underneath and that I looked at when I was over there. That's going to be knocked down now. Well, the, the situation is this, Paul W. Basically, what the court is asking us to do is to demolish, or ordering us to do, is to demolish and rebuild certain structures that have already been built, uh, ramps and pier columns. Because they feel that the location is not the location that you have built them. Right. They, 
you know, th- uh, the court has decided that that uh, that they were built improperly and that they need to be demolished and uh, and rebuilt. Of course, we disagree, but the court is the court, and even though that even though we may have to demolish them or in fact do rebuild them and then after this case is over in the trial court then we'll appeal as of right because so far we can only you you can't appeal until the case is finally over uh unless you ask permission and they don't have to give it to you but everyone gets their appellate right when the case is finally over we'll try to convince a court of appeals or the supreme court that we were right and that the piers and pier columns were built originally as they should have been. And then if if they say yes, then we'll demolish the new stuff that we just built and rebuild it the way it was. Aye, aye, aye. Uh, all right, so and the company now is going to appoint a committee of which your dad, and, and I think you, will not be a part of, but Dan Stamper will be, your president. And that committee, the whole idea is that the committee is to follow the letter of what the judge says needs to be done, they will follow the letter of the law, so to speak, and do what the judge says needs to be done. A- absolutely, uh, Paul W. What we're doing is is uh, the Detroit International Bridge Company has a board of directors. The board of directors is formed, forming a special committee. That special committee will be made up of Mr. Stamper and two outside directors, both of whom uh, were uh, have an extreme amount of knowledge in... Uh, Can you reveal who those people are yet or not? Well, I, I, I want to be sure that they've both absolutely said yes, but... Uh, I suppose you should wait until the judge says it's okay to do this, too. He, what if he says he wouldn't accept a committee? He wants you guys to make these decisions and follow his order. Well, he hasn't said that, but if he said that, then we'd follow that order, too, Paul okay. W. All right, okay. You <laughs> okay. know, i got to tell you, uh, this judge, uh, Judge uh, Wayne County Circuit Judge Prentice Edwards, uh, from some took some grief and from others took it was supported that when he threw your dad and Dan Stamper into jail, the fact of the matter is, as severe a consequence that was and, uh, and questioned by some, supported by others, it frankly seemed to work, Matthew. I mean, it's, it, you guys are not afraid of saying that that the, the, the jailing and the idea of more jail today weighed heavily in the decision to just go ahead and say, we may have a disagreement, we see it differently, but we're going to be sure we do exactly what this judge says. Right. I, 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 I hope uh, you and your listeners see, see, uh, uh, see that as an honest answer. Yeah, we're, uh, we're afraid of jail, but, but in addition to that, uh, Paul W., we've got, uh, we've got an important company, uh, we we feel that in addition to being a for-profit business, we provide a very important service to 25% of the trade between the United States and Canada. We've got lots of employees, and we need to protect that. And despite the fact that we feel very strongly that we followed the plans and the construction drawings to the T, the court has said otherwise. There's another time for that argument, and we can't allow our company, our people, or our family to be put in harm's way anymore, so we're going to do exactly what the court tells us to do. And, you know, one way of saying it is if it's 80 degrees and sunny out and the court orders that it's raining, we're going to put on our rain ponchos and hire a plane to seed the clouds. The uh, I'm going to stop you right there. Uh, okay. The, uh, the bridge company, uh, I mean, uh, rather uh, uh, MDOT, uh, responding, obviously, uh, their director of communication, Jeff Cranston, responding, quote, the bridge company today, uh, yesterday, today indicated that they will honor the terms of a contract they entered with the state of Michigan eight years ago. We are hopeful this will happen and await action in Wayne County Circuit Court Thursday, which is today. Uh, so I guess everybody would be hopeful that, in fact, the judge accepts what you say and your work continues and we can put this behind us, for goodness sakes. Now, that still doesn't take care of the question regarding a second span. And your company, I presume, Matthew Maroon, still wants to build that second span. Well, you know, Paul W., the most interesting part of this whole conversation is the exact same agreement that we're talking about right now that discusses the ramps, how they are to be built, and so on, says on page three that one of the three primary purposes of the entire contract is to build a second 
span right next to the Ambassador Bridge to Canada. So that was in your so, original agreement eight years ago. That's in the original agreement eight years ago. And they clearly so, have tried to change now and say they want to build it themselves. That That's right. So, you know, it's it, as, I, as we've discussed before, it's very complicated when your partner in construction at an extremely uh, uh, high-dollar project, a quarter of a billion dollars of federal money and a hundred million dollars of our money together decides halfway through the project that they want to leave you and come up with another partner two miles down the road in Canada. It's difficult dealing with them. Can, but, you, can you send me that page? I'd love yeah. to see that. And, uh, and you've been very kind about sending information along the way. And, uh, and finally, just so we get this clear again, I've heard so many times from people saying that the, the Maroon family, the, uh, the, Dib, uh, the DIBC, the Detroit International Bridge Company, can't possibly build the second span because Canada won't let them land uh, in Windsor or where they want to land. And I swear I heard Stacey Kerr say on my little tour that the landing over there in the Windsor area is already there. It, it is, and I'd invite any one of your listeners to drive across the existing Ambassador Bridge, and they'll see the the uh, uh, new concrete ramp right alongside the old bridge for the new span to slide into and connect to. But they wouldn't let you open it, uh, is what Canada is saying? They wouldn't let you use it once it was, uh, if you were able to build the bridge over, they still wouldn't let you come off the bridge or get on the bridge there? Uh, no, uh, Paul W. Canada has never said no. They're running us through an environmental gauntlet. Uh, make sure that uh, we don't hurt the birds and the bees when we go to build the uh, uh, the second span. But we're going to get through that gauntlet. And mostly that's a lobbying effort on a part of the government bridge types to say, well, forget about the Ambassador Bridge. We've got to spend uh, $2 billion on a government bridge because Canada will never let them land. That's not really a true statement. All right, uh, Matthew Maroon, uh, thank you for being available again. Good luck in court today. I hope it all works out and we can put all this behind us and get things done. The neighborhood will be happy. Uh, the ramps will be open that are there, and uh, everything will be uh, the way it should be. I, I have a feeling it's not over, but be nice to at least uh, get this thing going. Uh, good luck it, to you, Matthew. It sure would. Thank you very much, Paul W. Bye-bye. All right, bye-bye. Uh, Matthew Maroon, vice chairman of the family business, the Detroit International Bridge Company. See what uh, happens there. Talking about what matters to you. Paul W. Smith Mornings. Catch it live on News Talk 760 WJRAM. And stay up to date online at WJR.com.